to talk. I had the opportunity to interview meteorologist Rhonda Lee. Remember her last year? She was fired. Oh, from, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. KTBS in Shreveport, Louisiana, for right. defending her hairstyle Here, that's right. on mm -hmm. Facebook. Yeah, that's right. So um, I just wanted to know what was up with her, what, what happened to her, what, what she's doing now. So mm -hmm. here's the interview with me and Rhonda, meteorologist Rhonda Lee via Scout. What are you doing now? Have you gotten any uh, job offers or anything like that? No, not at all. And that's what's kind of, I don't know if it's because of what happened to me here. I don't know if I'm just applying to the wrong places. But for the most part, I feel that there is some sort of divine intervention because I am now um, about seven and a half months pregnant. So. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> well, oh. thank you. So it kind of, it worked out. The way it worked out is I got fired. I ran a marathon. Mm. I went to Ireland and I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> All within like a month. <laughs> so, so. But um, for the most part, I've been speaking to as many people as I can, trying to get the word out that natural hair is not some kind of death sentence for your job. It is, it's the way that nature intended you to wear your hair mm -hmm. on your head. So I've kind of been an advocate advocate and, and hopefully a support uh, person for young reporters, young people on television. I can't tell you how many young young people came up to me at the National Association of Black Journalists Conference just a few weeks ago in Orlando mm. saying that their professors are telling mm. them they're going mm. to have to straighten their hair if they ha have any hope of being successful in the news biz. And that broke my heart because they're telling these young people, you need to look as white as possible if you expect to survive. And they're getting this from HBCUs. You don't have any problems with black women, women with uh, straight hair or wearing weaves or wigs, do you? Not in the least. If you want to weave down to the floor, I'm all for it. <laughs> I, I insist that you do it. I insist that you make yourselves happy. Did you ever think you would be the Rosa Parks of natural hair? That's your label now. Not in a million years. I mean, this time last year, if you had told me, you know, you're going to run a marathon and be pregnant and then you're going to make international news, I would have thought somebody was on some kind of drug, you know? <laughs> it, but I mean, it, it, that whole saying that everything happens for a reason is very mm -hmm. true because I wouldn't have chose to do this. I just wanted to give the seven day forecast and go home. But they don't tell white women to, uh, to change their hairstyle so dramatically, drastically and dramatically but it's always geared towards the black woman. Why do you think that, why do you think they're scared of natural uh, hair on black women? I would probably venture to say that white women do actually get told you need to go a few shades lighter, a, few dar a little bit darker, a nice bob to fit your fr and fit and frame your face. You're, you look better with longer hair. They tell them that, but they don't tell them to be biologically different. Okay. And so that, to me, is where the line really gets drawn. What do you want to say to the professional women out there that's in your field that want to change? I want to say to them that keep doing what you do. If you have a nice hairstyle that looks good on you, wear it. Rock it. Make it look good. Because the main thing that we're trying to do now, anyway, is for acceptance. That is the issue at hand, is to accept us as us. Now, if your bosses tell you something different, I would venture to say, you know, you don't want to lose your job trying to be radical and, and, and change the world. But if you're comfortable with what you have, if you show confidence with your hair, mm -hmm. then, there's, then there's really nothing you can't do because that has been the way that I've been able to get past the barrier. You know something, I have to say that I think that you are a role model. I think you are a pioneer and that you are the Rosa Parks. You just can't take it anymore. I've had come, people come up to me with my locks. Do you wash your hair? Can I touch it? But it's really just the ignorance. And I think that you are here to educate people that it's okay to be me. It's okay to be black. It's okay to be beautiful. Right. Rhonda. Right. I, I have, you have to say thank you so much for that. Oh, thank, thank you for coming on Sister Talk TV show. Rhonda, do you want to say anything else before we sign off? No, but just real quickly, you know, I want to thank everybody in the world. I mean, literally in the world for their support. I never would have expected it in a million years. We as black women, we've got to learn to keep supporting each other. If, if your hair is long, fine. If your hair is short, fine. Love each other. And, and we've got to also keep those kids in mind. It starts with your children. 
Teach them that it's okay. Tell your little black boys that they don't have to have Justin Bieber hair. Believe me, that has come up. Um, teach your little girls that they're beautiful just the way they are. And we can make a difference very quickly doing that. Yes, that was Rhonda Lee, meteorologist uh -huh. Rhonda Lee. She's a fun person, very approachable, even from Via Scout. I had, uh, that's just part of the interview. Mm -hmm. I will be putting up the full interview on YouTube later this week. So what did you all think about that? I mean, Rhonda I'm Lee, correct. what she was going through. I, I think black hair is, black hair is beautiful, black hair is versatile, we can do it, we can rock it, as she said, mm -hmm. and, you know, we're in the 21st century, so come let's on, move. let's move on. Is this, is this all, is this the best we can do, is talk about <laughs> how short, <laughs> how, quote, nappy, yeah. come on, let's evolve. Uh, and that moves Please. us on to Cheryl Underwood. Did you hear about that? Oh, you know, yeah. before I say that, <laughs> she did we apologize. We she apologized. I love her. She love she apologized. I love her also. That. I've been a big fan of her for, yes. for years. Yes. And she should be Great. on this show. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, she didn't comment on the talk. And by the way, Sister Talk TV show was on before the talk. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's get it. Let's, you know, I'm just correcting. You, you know. <laughs> now, Holly Klum said that um, it was it was geared to a comment that uh, one of the uh, the uh, guests made on the uh, the talk. Holly Klum said that she saved her children's afro hair after yeah. she shaved mm -hmm. them, and so Cheryl interrupted and said, "Who would want to save an afro hair?" Do you see anybody in the salon saying, "I want to save the BD, save my BDBs and all that"? Who want to do that? So Sarah Gilbert jumped in and said, well, you know, I saved my kids' hair also. So she says, um, and uh, uh, Cheryl says something about, well, I bet it's soft and long and silky. Mm -hmm. A lot of people took offense to that. Uh, she like also Twitter yikes. backlash. It was, she also oh said that's nasty. Yeah, yeah that's nasty. nasty. That was oh, the key that word. That was the thing. That was one of the key words when she said that's nasty. And I also thought it was actually odd because my boys, I have two boys, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. I have my boys here. Mm. You know, I got their beady beads. <laughs> so she Beautiful. said, you know, she was saying that if, you know, women of color doesn't do that. And when they got their first hair, because I still got them, you know, they hair. My oldest is 25. Yeah. You know, so mm. um, I mm. thought that was strange. But um, I, I love Cheryl. Mm -hmm. And I, I respect, because everyone does not, um, you know, support the natural hair. Right, right. Mm -hmm. She it's doesn't. Just like Ron just Lee said. She said, if you want to wear your weave or have straight hair all the way down to your knee, do rock it, rock it, rock it. And I totally under, because I don't have every hairstyle. I don't have locks, <laughs> no <laughs> hair, more hair. You know that, right? So I, I, I support the sisters. I wish we had some pictures of that. Wow. Please, if we want to hear your point of view, 212-757-1393, 212-757-1393. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, there may be somebody who thought it was funny. <laughs> We're not going to get on you on that. You know? No, but you know, I have no. cut my hair, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I pretty much saved it. So, I, you know, I've always, and I'm about to cut it tonight some more. Oh. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to save it. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Right. It's, it's still with you. It's not going anywhere. Right. It's not going anywhere. But the Good. fact that she said it was nasty and, and she was so appalled, I, I, I felt sorry. I felt sad for her. I really wasn't mad at her, to be right. honest. Uh -huh. I thought it was sad that she, because she was saying that about herself. That's right. the way I took it. Like, she was attacking, attacking herself about, that's nasty. Who want that old nappy? Because she, you know, we know that, that straight stuff ain't yours mm -hmm. either, Cheryl. You know what I'm saying? She, and she well, she, does, she, took to wig, she took her wig off on television, so we already yeah, know that. We are, right. <laughs> but she, you know, the way she referred to, I took it the way she was referring yes. to herself. I didn't. Right. You, you have you a know. point there. You have and a she's point. saying it to millions and millions of people who have have a certain opinion about black people and black people's hair. You know, so it's sending a message to someone. And they were just laughing. Perhaps the if wrong you ever message. saw the video, they were just laughing and laughing. Yeah, and, and that's, like, mm, oh, that's I'm so glad you said that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. And that that part right there was so sad to sit there with the white women uh, and sit up there talking about your, yourself mm -hmm. like that, talking about hard your hair. Right. And then what's the other sister name, Aisha? Aisha Taylor. Aisha Taylor. Yeah. Aisha Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Well, she didn't know what to say. What <laughs> <laughs> would she dare she say? Like, Anything oh, that she Lord. said would have been inflammatory <laughs> at that <laughs> point. Was like, uh, that <laughs> phrase was priceless. <laughs> <laughs> that phrase was like, oh, Lord, She's like, well, she what did. I do with that? Oh, <laughs> she had a good talking. But I wish she would have said something. Yeah. 
Yeah. I wish she would have said know, something, yeah. good, bad, or indifferent. I wish she would have said something. Okay. But it's a part of that hidden curriculum. Because okay. I know when I was mm. growing up, mm -hmm. it was all about you had to have the light ears and light eyes and the long hair. Mm -hmm. The baby dolls were all straight hair, blue eyed. And then, you know, when you started looking at society and media, that's all they promoted. That's yes. all they promoted. So, yeah. you know, maybe Cheryl has not gotten past that. Well, I think she has now. <laughs> I think she's long, and, you long know, past. I, I, I accept her apology. I, th yeah. I think yeah. every, a whole lot of people have not. 